Hi everyone, in this video today we're gonna look at how to make a morphing ball mechanic in our game similar to what we can see in games like Metroid Dread or Super Metroid. This is a very handy mechanic to have in a game as it allows us to unlock new area in our 2D platformer slash Metroidvania games. Once you have that mechanic done, you can achieve a better feeling of progression in your game that makes your player feel way more engaged. This video is part of an upcoming update to my 2D platformer Udemy course that is discounted at the moment for 5 days. The link is in the description of this video. The update will be released within a week and it will bring new video like how to create a splash screen for this being the name of your company, how to create an animated title screen when you launch the game with textured buttons that display an animation when you click on it, a simple cutscene that we will use as the backbone of an upcoming animated cutscene and as well as an introduction to how to use a particle system and also how to create a simple enemy that throws bombs at us when we are getting too close of him. So if you consider to buy that course please buy it from the link in the description of this video as Udemy then give me a bigger percentage of the price of my course. So let's do a morphing ball now. So the first thing we need to do is to go to our player. And our player, what we are interested about is the collision shape because this is what stops us to uh, actually be able to reach a narrow uh, area or smaller area in our levels. So we need to basically change that. If uh, we were using an animation player, we will just like make a key uh, and we just like transform that and that will be fine. But here uh, I have used an uh, animated sprite and I've already have, uh, by the way, the animation that we're going to use. So this is the animation ball when the player is not moving and here is moving ball when the player is moving uh, in the, the morphing, bomb, morphing ball form. Uh, and so what we're going to do is like we're going to modify the collision shape through code because it's a, it's a good it's a good exercise. So for doing so what we basically need to access through the code is that. So you come here click on collision shape and here normally you're going to see that you click on your shape, rectangle for me, and here I have the extent. That's what we're going to change. And we're also going to change the position that is right here. Uh, we can access that through code, and that's what we're going to do right now. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going uh, to go down just a bit before we jump, so here. And what I'm going to say is that I'm going to say if input dot is action pressed not just press it's important to use action pressed because uh, we want to be in that form only when we are keeping uh, the, the the key down the, the and so that key gonna be in my case a key that is called ui ball and that key i'm gonna show you in the input map so project setting input map for me it is uh, that one UI ball right here. So for me, it's the key B. I'm just going to show you, by the way, if you have never done that, how to create a key. So uh, me, I'm using the um, the the, the Godot uh, the Godot uh, normal um, way of um, creating an input map. So I'm going to say UI. And for example, you can you can call it a UI up. Uh, I don't know pizza. And so you click here on Add. And then here you click on the plus, and you can choose what type of um, of uh, input you want to register and so for me here it's going to be a physical key because I'm using my keyboard and then I just have to tap the, the key that I want to, uh, to to use so for me for example it's going to be a P like pizza and I click OK and then now I can access that uh, that key into the code I'm not going to use it but that's it and so me I've already created so UI board is right here so that's what I'm using right now so I'm Every time I'm pressing the, the key uh, B, uh, we will do some stuff. So now I need to basically access the collision shape. And for accessing the collision shape, what I need to do is just to say dollar sign, collision shape, and then I need to go to shape and dot extent. And here I need to set it equal to a vector 2. And that's where I can change the... Um, the number, tweak the number. So here it's going to be 7 by 7. So it's going to be just like a normal square. And so now, if I uh, just go back to my project and I'm just going to click on debug and visible collision shape, I go back into my level right here. If I click uh, play and I click on B, 
Now you can see that my, uh, my player has just shift weirdly. And this is because the collision shape has a uh, change. And so basically that's, if that, that show us that it works and that we just need to be more precise into the code. So now we need to do the same things. And so we're going to do that with the collision shape, but the position this time. So collision shape dot position. And then here, what we're going to say is that basically the position is equal to a vector two. And between parentheses, it's going to be minus 1 and 9. At least normally, it's supposed to be that. Uh, so if you have like uh, trouble to um, actually guess what's going to be uh, the, 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 the value that you need to use here, what you need to do is just to go back in your players. And uh, here, when you click on collision shape, you have those uh, values here. And so, for example, if you're like making a uh, change, you can see that the value on the right side are changing, you know. So that's how you um, know that um, the value that you want to use. That's it. And so me basically here, what I'm going to do is like uh, my value is 7 and 14.5. Here is minus 1 and uh, 1.5. And so the value that works for me that I've already uh, tested is those two. So now if I go back into my level morphing ball and I click on play, if I click on B, now you're going to see that I'm going to be able to pass right here. See, because uh, the collision shape has changed now. But we need to actually reset the collision shape. And so for that, there's many ways we can do that. Uh, me, uh, what I'm doing is like I'm using uh, something that is a bit nifty because uh, this is my code. So this is the code that you, uh, you, you have when you buy my course on Udemy. So like if you want to have that for, that um things that works perfectly, you can uh, think about buying that course. Uh, so here I have the, the movement of my player that are in a variable called movement. And in that variable, uh, what I'm storing is basically those two inputs, the right arrow key and the left arrow key. And what I want to do is like, because I need to reset the collision shape of my player, I can go just under it. Uh, under the flip H movement, and I can uh, reset the actual um, value of my collision shape. And at the same time, by doing so, what I will do is also that I will make it able for my character to flip when he's in the morphing ball as well. So I'm just like <laughs> killing two birds with one stone, basically. So let's go back here. So what I'm going to say is like, dollar sign, collision shape 2D. And so the shape dot extent gonna be equal to a vector two, and between parentheses it's gonna be seven and fourteen dot five, so the, the the normal value. And then after that, I'm gonna say again collision shape, and then I'm gonna reset the position, and that position was vector two, and between parentheses it was a minus one normally, and 1.5 and so now if I relaunch the game so if I press it's all right and if I move back you can see that the, the, the collision shape is resetting so that's good but that's not enough we want more <laughs> so we're gonna do more now what we want to do is basically when we are uh, pressing on the b on the the key uh, b what we want to do is to play the animation so let's do it so i've already created the animation and i'm just going to show you because uh, so for my player, I have an, uh, an animation, uh, animated sprite that I rename Anim, and I already have those two. I have ball when he's idling in that ball position, and moving ball when he's moving. So here, uh, what I'm going to do is like I'm going to call uh, Anim dot play, and I'm going to call the ball animation. So now, if I go back on uh, level morphing ball, I click. It works. And so now I can move. So we have a good start, but it's not enough. So now what we need to do is to actually do something else. Um, 
I have a lot of code, as you can see here, because my game is quite complete. Uh, that's a 2D Metroidvania. It is supposed to be like a, a sort of mel uh, mix between Super Metroid and Hollow Knight and Celeste. And so I have a very, very compli code, uh, complicated code, but very, very precise. And so basically I need, uh, in my case, to make my code even more precise. And for that, what I need to do uh, in my case, what uh, was working the best was to actually create a raycast uh, that is disabled by nature. I'm gonna just call it floorcast. I'm just gonna put it with the raycast right here. And so it's enable, it's disabled by default. I'm just gonna resize it at 10 and I'm gonna move it a bit back. So I'm gonna move it a little bit right here. And so basically what I'm going to do with that is like uh, I'm going to use it to um, when I am in a morphing ball position, it's going to be activated and it's going to help me to um, see if I am colliding with the floor or not. So like this, I will be able to separate my morphing ball animation uh, from the, the other animation that I already have. And also it will give me a bit more control um, into the, the movement that I want to uh, to make with. For example, it will be able to uh, make the, um, the character uh, be able to jump in the morphing ball position. So now I need to access that. And for doing so, the same way that we have done before, what I need to do as well is that I need to say that dot assign and I need to go for floor cast and then dot enable and here I need to say true. And so like this, it will enable by default the floor cast and uh, I need to reset those things. So I need to say here else floor cast dot enable equal false. So that's one part, but now we need to basically have more, um, we need to have basically more condition to make that code work. So because I have put the movement of my player into that variable movement, uh, here what I'm going to say is like I'm going to create a condition and I'm going to say in that condition that, uh, so if I'm pressing on the B, a key and the movement is equal to zero. So if I'm not moving, then I play ball. And then what I'm going to say is like, I'm going to create another if statement. And this time I'm going to say if the movement are not equal to zero. And then what I want to do is like, I want to keep the same uh, collision shape size, the floor cast, uh, any ball and stuff, but I want to change my animation. And this time it's going to be moving ball. So now if I launch the game, Let's see what happened. I'm pressing on B and you can see that the animation changed, but it's not moving yet. And this is because of different stuff. Uh, it's because we um, have uh, other movement that basically uh, in the code are using those kind of movement dot zero and stuff like that. So what we need to do now is basically we need to be more precise and for that we're going to create a variable that we're going to call ball. It's going to be a boolean. It's going to be false by, uh, by default. And here, what we need to say is that we need first to turn it on when we are pressing the key. So where is it? Uh, it is my the code is right here. So when I'm pressing the B key, I want ball to be true. Same things when I am pressing the key and I'm moving, but when I'm not pressing the key, I want ball to be equal to false. And then I need to go to the portions of code that can be in conflict with. So the portion of code where I am idling or moving. And so what I need to say here, I need to say that if movement are not equal to zero and if ball equal false and if ball double equal false, then I can do those movements. And I need to do the same as well right here. So for example, right here, I need to do it as well. This is not automatic for you. Like this is, if you don't have like the same um, architecture of code, it's fine. Like the, the, the hierarchy of your code can be completely different. So it's not automatically something that you need to do. But in my case, that's something I need to do. And so now normally I think it should like be uh, not working fully. 
But the, ah yes, it works. That's fine. But still, I have some little problem because now when I'm moving, I need to basically use the movement uh, that I've uh, I've created before. So here I have a portions of code. I'm going to show you. So that one. So I'm going to basically just reuse that. I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to go down. And when I'm going to move here, I'm going to just put my code right here. And so. Technically, now it should work. So let's see how it works. So now I'm pressing the B key and you can see I can move and I can jump. And so that's good. But if I jump while moving, I have the position that go back to the, the jump position. So I need also to solve that. So I need to create uh, something here. So basically, I need to use that one, that one, and I need to say, so I'm going to copy it. I'm going to put it in uh, full screen. I'm going to copy that portion of my code. So here you need to use the portion of your code if you, uh, if you don't uh, use my code. Uh, and so here what I'm just going to say, I'm going to say that n ball double equal to true. Then I need to say moving ball. And so now, basically, I think it should work. Let's have a look. No, it doesn't work yet because I have other things to um, to change. So I need here to come. And so, where is it? If movement equals zero, pum pum pum, and body equal false. Okay. I just need to find a portion of my code where I am not on the floor and I am moving. N ball double equal false, jump. Then here, if it's true, uh, it's moving ball. Okay, and here I'm going to specify again n ball double equal false. So let's see now if it works. I can jump. Voila, night night works. We still have some little uh, little stuff, but you see that it's way much better. So this is like we have that when we are falling. So we basically can also create a little um, um, a little value here. I can say like if so and ball double equal false that and so I can copy that. Ah fuck, I can copy that after that, and I can say that if ball is true, then after that we can uh, use moving ball, true, then it's going to be here, moving ball, so now it should work. My code is very precise, so that's what I, I, I love about the code I've made. So yeah, yeah, it works better. As you can see, it works way much better. And so now we can just go like this and we can like set up a lot of things like and we can access to different elements uh, in our game so that's what i was looking to show you so basically i'm just gonna turn on turn off the debug i'm gonna show you the result without the collision shape visible so now we're here and we're just moving and that's it so that's very cool so like uh, that's what uh, we were like uh, able to do after the, this video. So now we have like a morphing ball that is working well, like basically like in Metroid. After that, you can like opt, uh, obviously you can make it like uh, working even differently. Like you can make, for example, like uh, you can right now if we are uh, uh, not pressing uh, B, we can still have the normal animation. But you can uh, you can create like condition to lock it without no problem. It should be easy for you to do now. Uh, we can do a lot of more stuff. We can also like instantiate bomb. 
that can help us to uh, actually destroy element of the the uh, the game um, of the level and stuff so like there's many 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 things we can do uh, and so anyway me i want to thank you for watching and i will see you next time